welcome back to my channel and if you're new my name is Zoe but most people on here know me as ZA Reptiles and today I have Phoenix with me joining us for this video. So today's video was inspired by someone named Gigi who reached out to me on Instagram um, asking me for tips for first time snake owners. So I figured you know what that's a great video idea and it would give me something to film today. So thank you Gigi for that idea. Um, so of course that's why Phoenix is out today because Phoenix was my first snake. So I learned a lot from Phoenix. So I have a ton of first time snake owner tips. So we're going to jump right into it. But real quick before we do that, if you guys are new and you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more of my animals or learning kind of more about wildlife and conservation. All of that are things that I talk about here on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and leave a tip for first time snake owners in the comments or let me know what your first snake was in the comments or both. Okay, so my first tip is something that sometimes gets overlooked when you bring home a new animal. Okay, so this first tip is very important if you are someone that already has other reptiles. So maybe you already have lizards and this is just gonna be your first snake. It's very important to quarantine new animals before you introduce them to the same area or same supplies as your animals you already have. Because when you bring home a new animal, it could have some sort of sickness or mites, maybe something you don't notice right off the bat or is an underlying issue. So when you first bring it in, you want to keep it somewhere separate from your other animals where you can monitor and make sure that it is healthy before you put it in, say, your reptile room or your bedroom where you're keeping your other animals. Now, if the snake you're bringing home is your first reptile, it's your first pet, so you don't really need to worry about quarantining it away from other animals because it's your first pet, then don't quite think of it as a quarantine separation process, but still do a quarantine setup. So what I mean by this is keep your setup you're keeping your animal in or your snake in as simple as possible. Use paper towels as your substrate. That's generally a good idea when doing a quarantine setup because they're white. So it's very easy to look at their poop, to check for mites. It's very easy to see things on a paper towel substrate. Keep things that are super easy to clean inside. So just some plastic hides, your water dish, keep it simple. So it's very easy to monitor your new animal and its health. Now, a real, good rule of thumb is to do this for 30 days. After that, you can go ahead and do a nice, awesome, cool setup. So it's always a good idea to do a quarantine setup when you first bring home an animal. If you guys are more interested in learning about quarantine and the details of it all, I did do a video on quarantine when I was quarantining a new snake that I got for my birthday. So that's a good tip. So kind of going off of that, um, another thing gets overlooked a lot when you bring home new animals, and this goes for not just new snakes, but new animals, reptiles in general, is to give them an adjustment period. Coming to a new home with new people, new sights, new smells, a new environment, it can be stressful. So it's really good to give that animal like a week to just settle in to their new environment without handling. So typically what I do is when I bring home a new animal, I stay hands off for the first week. When I have snakes, I want to make sure that they get a feeding in first. So I'm usually hands off for a week and I make sure they get one feeding in before I start readily handling them. So with Phoenix, it was very tempting since she was my first snake. I just wanted to get her home and handle her and play with her. But I gave her her week to sit and adjust and just hang out before I tried handling her. So going off of feeding, um, another thing to keep in mind is when you feed a snake, you want to leave it alone for about 48 hours afterwards to give it time to digest its food. If you handle a snake too soon after eating, there's a high possibility of them regurgitating and that's just really not good for them. There goes their meal. So 
you want to give your snake time to properly digest before you start handling again. Now, I'm surprised Phoenix didn't have a ton of issues um, other than being completely obese when I got her. Um, if you guys are new and you don't know Phoenix's story, that was one of my very first videos. So you can go ahead and watch it. Just excuse the video quality. Um, it was a rough time. But basically, Phoenix was being fed like every three days and being handled like every day. So I'm amazed she doesn't, she didn't have issues other than being completely obese. But give your snakes time to digest, 48 hours to just sit and digest without you bugging them. So then going off of that, um, I'm gonna talk about handling. So a lot of people think you need to be giving your animals attention every single day. Now, some reptiles, you do want to give them lots of attention and lots of handling to make them better with handling. So, like, iguanas are one that are, I don't want to say social, I don't know if that's the right word, but they're one that you want to work with a lot to keep them from becoming aggressive, to get them used to you. Now, snakes don't really need that. Um, when you have a baby or a new snake, you want to handle it quite often, do lots of little handling sessions, lots of short handling sessions, so the snake gets used to you. Once it's used to you though, snakes don't need attention every single day. Handling your snake a couple times a week is good enough. That will suffice. I mean, snakes don't really like being handled. They tolerate handling. So as long as you've got your snake to the point where, you know, it kind of knows you, it's used to you, it tolerates handling, you don't need to hold it every single day. They're not like a dog that needs attention all the time. They'll be fine if you ignore them for a couple days, just making sure that they have fresh water and a good clean environment. But when you're handling, just take extra caution to watch their behavior, watch their body language, look for any signs of stress that should indicate that your handling session should probably come to an end for the day. So it can be kind of scary with your first snake, um, going in and picking it up and handling it because you don't know the snake yet. I always have a problem with that when I first bring home a snake because I don't know its personality. So I'm always um, timid when it comes to just reaching in and grabbing it because I want to get to know their personality first. So it's actually a really good idea when you are giving your snake the adjustment period where you're not handling it, you're letting it get used to its surroundings, just to sit and watch it, just to get an idea of its personality and how it acts. Phoenix is a very curious snake. When I first brought her home, she was always adventuring around, checking things out, always watching you. So it was a little intimidating to go in and reach in and pick her up. Now going off of that, your first snake, I swear, they can sense fear. I don't know if that's been scientifically proven or not, but I'm pretty sure they can sense fear, at least she can. When you go to pick up your snake, you have to be confident. You just have to reach in and do it. But mind you, keep in mind your uh, snake's personality, of course. But like with Phoenix, if I take too long, she would strike at me. If I go right in and just confidently pick her up and take her out, she's totally fine. Phoenix is one of those snakes that doesn't like you taking your time and poking at her and trying to pick her up. She gets really annoyed by that. You just go in, grab her, pull her out. She's totally fine. You need a little bit of courage when I was first working with picking her up because I'd actually never held a snake before getting Phoenix. I never had an opportunity to, otherwise I totally would have. Um, but you know, I had Arcadius, I've had Zephyr. I knew I wanted to get into reptiles. I knew reptiles were my thing but just had never had the opportunity to actually hold a snake before. So I never picked one up. Holding one is a lot less intimidating than going into its home and picking it up. So it took me a while to get fully confident with just going in and picking her up because she was always watching. She was always intently watching. The minute your hand came in, she came over to check it out. And the first time I ever tried to grab her, she struck at me. So I had to get past that. But as long as you go in, you should still do that. As long as you go in very confidently, very quickly and just grab her, totally good. So when you go to pick up your snake, be very confident, just go for it. So let's talk about some husbandry things. So before you bring home your snake, first of all, you should have an idea of what kind of snake you want. And of course, do your research so that you're prepared and know what that animal needs and its care before it comes into your care. 
So I knew I wanted a corn snake for my first snake as I'm the look for a corn snake. So obviously I had already done research on corn snakes. So you want to be prepared. Secondly, you need to decide, well, going off of being prepared, you need to have an enclosure ready. So you need to decide whether you want a tub set up or a tank or enclosure type of setup. You need to decide what you're going to put it in. Now there's a lot of different arguments for different things. I use both tubs, tanks, PVC enclosures. I like them all. I think a lot of it just depends on the species and its requirements. So for example, all of my snakes that require high humidity are in tubs. My snakes that do not, they're in tanks. My animals that need good airflow, like my chameleon and my cubanitinol, they're in reptibris screen cages. So it all just depends on the animal and its needs. But you can really, you can make tubs work. Tanks are a little harder if you need a high humidity. That's why I like corn snakes for beginners because they're humidity. They don't really need humidity and, or as much humidity. Um, so they're totally fine being kept in a tank. So you just, you find what works for you. Um, I'll eventually do a video about tanks versus tubs, my opinions, pros and cons, but there's a lot of videos like that out there already. So you can go and check those out and see what other people have said. But if you want kind of more ideas, um, I also recommend joining Facebook groups for maybe some different species you're thinking of or just general snake Facebook groups. Now, a lot of people are like, no, Facebook groups, they're so mean, they're so horrible, blah, 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 blah. Some have some know-it-alls that are a little nasty and will take down beginners. But if you've done your research and you have a basic understanding of the, of the care, you should be fine in those groups. The people they tear down are the ones that clearly did absolutely zero research and are keeping the animals completely improperly. So if you get a chameleon, and you don't provide it UVB, even one basic Google search saying chameleon care, first thing that pops up is UVB, needs UVB. If you get chameleon and you don't provide it UVB, these people are probably going to be down your throat about the fact that your chameleon doesn't have like the most important part of its care. So as long as you have common sense and you've done your basic research, you'll be fine in a Facebook group. You're always gonna get people who are naysayers that think they're better than everyone else. That that's everywhere. That's not just Facebook groups. But I've gotten a lot of help from Facebook groups. Um, the iguana Facebook groups helped me a ton when I got Arcadius, my iguana, because of his MBD. They helped me with building my enclosure. They've been super helpful. I haven't had really any issues with Facebook groups. So like when I got Phoenix, I went to a corn snake Facebook group and I was like, hey, this is her feeding schedule. She's really fat. What are you going to do? And they were all very helpful. So if you have any questions, go to these groups. In all of these groups, if you know what you're looking for, you can search in the group for keywords. So if you want to see someone use a tub setup for the animal, go to that group and you can search plastic bin, bin, tub, something like that to give you those results. A lot of times people are posting pictures of their setup so you can get kind of an idea. So I really like to use Facebook groups as a reference for different things and for information. Now, one of my most important, like huge tips I have for snake keepers is to buy frozen rodents in bulk. So ideally you want a snake. This is my personal opinion, mind you. People might have different opinions. This is my personal opinion. You want a snake that's eating frozen thawed rodents as opposed to live. One, it's cheaper. Two, you can stock up on them, just store them in your freezer. Three, it's less risk for your snake. Live rodents can fight back and cause your snake injuries and then possibly vet bills and that's not fun. So I recommend frozen thawed mice. It's just so much easier, it's safer, it's cheaper. And buying them in bulk, you get them for so much better prices than buying them individually from say a pet store. So twice a year, I stock up on all the rodents I need for six months at an expo from people that breed rats and mice specifically for feeders to be sold in bulk so their prices are very low. I just, in December, bought all my snakes their food for six months and spent about $120. 
when I took a poll on Instagram to see how much you guys thought I spent, a lot of people were saying like $300. Nope, I spent about half of that, not even, on all of my snakes for half a year. So that's like a huge, huge tip that I always tell people. Find someone who breeds rodents to be sold in bulk for snakes. All right, so keeping on with the care. So a lot of people like to use heat mats for snakes, me included. I used to use overhead lighting for Phoenix to keep her warm. Now I use heat mats for all of my snakes. And when you use a heat mat, you need to use a thermostat. Heat mats can overheat, you don't have control over the temperature, and it can hurt your snake. You need to always, always, always use a thermostat. You can get them right on Amazon for like 15 bucks. You plug your heat mat into that and it controls the temperature of the mat to make sure it doesn't get too hot for your snake. Now you also want to have a thermometer, um, some sort of humidity gauge to make sure that you have, you know, you have another thing, another resource to check the temperature in your enclosure, but also to check the humidity. Now I like to have a temperature gauge on the hot side and the cold side of the enclosure so you can see the two different temperatures. Um, a lot of more advanced reptile keepers use temperature guns. So if you're a first time snake owner, definitely recommend getting one of those. Um, so temperature gun, it's a little laser pointer. You point it right at the spot you wanna check the temperature of and it tells you on the gun what the temperature is. Highly, highly recommend getting one of those. Again, right on Amazon. So because all the stuff I'm saying is on Amazon, I'll put a link below for an Amazon list of beginner snake keeper items I recommend you guys getting or checking out. Um, so you have just kind of a nice guide, little shopping list of all the extras, maybe some things you didn't think about that you needed. So kind of going back to feeding, um, it's important to make sure that you have an established feeding like guideline, um, time timeline, that's what I'm looking for. How often are you gonna feed your snake? Most of my snakes eat once every two weeks. Kronk, my big boa, eats once every three weeks. And my baby snakes or my smaller snakes eat once a week. Now, when you are getting food for your snake, you wanna get food that's about the size of the thickest part of their body. That's about what they can fit in there. So if you get something that's about the thickest part, you'll be good to go. Now my next tip is to make sure that you set aside money for your animal. Not only do you have to buy things like substrates, feeders, but reptiles do need to see the vet. They do have to go to the vet sometimes if they're sick with issues, even just for a checkup. You should be taking your reptile to the vet. And a lot of people don't because it's a reptile, but they do. It's a pet, they need to see the vet. So setting aside money so that you could take your snake to the vet when it needs to see a vet is very important. You don't want to be that person that all of a sudden their snake is sick and you can't afford to take them to the vet. It's your responsibility as their owner to give them all the care that they need. So set aside some money from each paycheck so you have plenty of money to take them to the vet when they need to see a vet. My next tip isn't just for beginners, it's actually for like all reptile owners, but to take advantage of sales. So if a store is having a sale on lights or on bedding, or you go to an expo, a lot of times companies will have special sales and deals at expos. Take advantage of those and stock up on things like substrates and lights. So that's what I did before I moved back here the first time when I graduated college. We don't have pet stores up here, so I had to order everything online or travel. So before I left college, I went to an expo and took advantage of the deals they were having on their substrates and got a crap ton of substrate. So I was good here for a while. The next tip is to make sure that you have at least two hides in your enclosure. You want one hide on the warm side and one hide on the cool side. So the snake can thermoregulate, it can decide whether it wants to be hot or cold and still feel hidden and safe. Now a third hide, which would be a good hide, is a humid hide. So this goes along with helping them with shedding. So when your snake goes into shed, this part's a little freaky. So when your snake goes into shed, it'll usually look pretty dull. They might have blue eyes. So they call it going into blue for that reason. When your snake is in shed, it's usually a good idea to not handle it. A lot of times snakes can be kind of, their stress can go a little higher. They can be a little more timid when they're in shed. You think about it, 
they've got that eye cap that's getting cloudy it's gonna shed so they can't see very well and it can be scary when something's grabbing them and they can't see so sometimes snakes can be a little finicky during shedding time so it's best usually to leave them alone during this time now it can be a little confusing as to when they shed and it tricked me at first because she got super cloudy i knew she was gonna shed and then a couple days later she was she looked totally normal but there was no snake skin anymore so expect that they'll look like they're gonna shed and then they'll look totally normal and then usually the next day they'll shed so to help with the shed you want to raise the humidity a little bit whether it's spraying the enclosure or offering a humid hide i like to offer humid hides for animals that have kind of a drier environment like the corn snake the sand boa the hog nose i like to provide a hide that has a wet paper towel inside or some moss so they have somewhere to go that's a little humid to help get that skin off. Then our last tip is cleaning solution. You don't need to go out and spend tons of money on reptile disinfectants and reptile cleaners. I personally use a mixture of water and vinegar right in a spray bottle. I do 50-50 and just use that to clean things. You spray it, use paper towel, make sure you rinse it really good and you're good to go. So I used to buy reptile cleaners now I save my money and just use water and vinegar. All right, so that is it for my beginner snake keeper tips. Remember, if you guys are watching this and you've had snakes, let me know in the comments what your first snake was and any beginner tips that you might have. And if you are a beginner snake keeper, I hope this helped you guys. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you at the next video.